What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where on every episode, I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today, we're continuing on with part four of Should Christians Observe Slash Celebrate Halloween, according to former Satanist John Ramirez. Stick around. So we haven't really gotten a cognitive, reasonable response out of John Ramirez, and the psychological derailment train is just going to continue into argument three. So um, legally binding contracts to Satan, problems with pumpkins and Achu, the, the sneeze demon, <laughs> all of this, reasons why this former Satanist says Christians should have no part with Halloween. Now, my contention is that the traditions surrounding Halloween of trick-or-treating, dressing up in costumes, having Halloween parties, you know, watching a, a Disney family-friendly horror movie with your kids, or heaven forbid, watching Nightmare on Elm Street when you don't have kids, that these things are in the realm of Christian liberty and freedom, neither commanded nor forbidden in the scriptures. That is my contention. Now, his contention is that because he was a former Satanist and because the devil told him these things, they are true, and he then needs to teach them to the church. And what this makes him is a false teacher. So he thinks he's doing something pious, right? He thinks he's warning Christians, but what he's feeding them is bad doctrine bad theology. He is still a servant of the devil, even though he's a Christian, because he's sending the devil's message to Christians to rob them of their hope and their security that they have in Christ. So we're going to get to argument number four, why Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween. No. Another reason I see, I see, I don't know. I think the the, the whole key of, of Halloween is the demonic, the rituals, the celebration, uh, the, the 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 music. Every when you go to club house party, or even even sometimes we take Halloween and we take we bring it into our churches. We dress people up mm. as Noah. We dress people up as Abraham. But it, 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 is that really God? Is, is is that really in the Bible? I mean, I understand you say we celebrate harvests. Yeah, well, hoppers are so. I don't need pumpkins in my house. Pumpkins ain't gonna get me to heaven. And me putting pumpkins in my door and candles in my door, it's like me putting food in my door, but I don't want stray dogs to come to my door. When you put pumpkins in your door and you put you put candles and you put candles in, or you put these kind of, you dress up your house in Halloween, you call yourself a Christian, really? The reality of it, you telling the devil, you got legal rights over my house because I dressed it up, I made a contract with you, and now you're more than welcome to come into my house. That means you grieve the Holy Spirit, you grieve the things of God, you grieve your walk with God, and everything that God has for you, every blessing that God has for you, every opportunity God has for you, you just cancel your assignment. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Yeah, pretty much. So, word salad again. Um, and not only did that not make sense, not only was that not a coherent thought, but it's contradictory to what he said in part one. But what he would do is he would have a play at church. He wouldn't have these harvest festivals. He'd have a play at church. You know, I mean, for me, if, if I was a pastor and I'm going to do uh, a celebration on October 31st, I would do a play to show how the evil and the dark side of what Halloween is. But in order to have a play, you got to dress people up. So right now, we're not supposed to dress people up in costumes, even in church. But it but it's also at the same time okay because he said he would rather have a passion play on Halloween than a harvest festival. Let's talk about these harvest festivals, shall we? Some churches do these. I've gone to churches that do these where they have this kind of harvest service. And what happens is uh, the reason I make the Donald Trump motion is because <laughs> the Christians, we bring in to the church as much food as we have to bring in to give. And we pile it all up in front of the altar and we consecrate it, we pray over it, and then the church gives it to the poor. Now, if that kind of a harvest where you're giving, prayerfully giving to the poor isn't Christian, then I don't know what is, John Ramirez. I have no idea. 
But the idea of doing a har I would say doing harvest in lieu of Halloween is stupid. But if you go to a church where you're bringing in the fruits of your labor during the season of harvest to dis distribute among the poor, then you're doing a Christian deed. That is what we as Christians are called to do, to love and to serve our neighbor. But he doesn't understand that at all. He just thinks that, you know, the mercy of God is dependent upon your obedience, which is a huge corruption of the gospel. You heard him. Pumpkins ain't going to save my soul. I don't need pumpkins. I don't need candles. And if you do all of that, then you've grieved the Holy Spirit and you've canceled out all of the blessings God has for you. This is word of faith heresy. This is, this is works righteousness heresy. Look, the grace and mercy of God, the blessings of God come to us not on account of our merit, but on account of Christ's merit, what Christ has done, Christ's obedience to his Father being credited to us, sealed at the cross, him bearing the condemnation for our sin in his flesh, enduring our death, rising from the dead as a sure sign and promise that that sacrifice was pleasing to God the Father, and just like he's risen from the dead, so too shall you and I, with him when he comes. That's the gospel. You can't rob yourself of the blessings of God by putting a pumpkin out on your front yard or lighting a spooky candle or putting fake spider webs up or what, what, whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, I've had, in some videos, I've had clips that m outright mock him because to mock something is to strip it of its power. So I mock him. And I mock the concept of death. And I mock the concept of the devil because the devil is defeated. Because the devil is defeated at the cross. Because he is judged. He is condemned. As the, the words of the great Reformation hymn, one little word can fell him. And that little word is tetelestai. It is finished. Until next time, may God richly bless you. And the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. I put a spell on you. And now you're mine. <laughs> you can't stop the things I do. I ain't lying. No! No! Oh, don't look at that! Been 300 years, right down to the day 